Okay, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Sean with Blue Ridge Silverhound, and we got another edition of the Pocket Change Market Report, this time for May 29th, 2021. All right, so we're here. All right, this is what I feel like kind of like that that line drawn across the sand uh, between, you know, what is usually customarily a very active coin type season um I, I usually classify that as any time between october to the beginning of summer so once we cross into june it'll be interesting to see how the secondary market reacts to not only some of these error and variety finds that we're going to talk about today but in addition to the things that are going to be talked about in the graded coin market and that's usually focused on my Monday market reports on guess what Mondays um, but here we are last PCMR of the month uh, let's go ahead and uh, see what we got for this week actually believe it or not I have quite a nice list and um, my next week's show uh, for the first week of June that's gonna be the big one I'm gonna go and do like 40 50 coins so this one, we have a pretty nice selection to kind of get your guys' Saturday started. But if this is your first time here, we take a look at ungraded, just pure, really nice finds uh, of either the error or variety sort. No graded coins are, are talked about in this video. Because ideally, the, the real reason why that you want to take a coin and just flip it for a little bit of extra money, you know, nice quick profit is that you know the coin doesn't quit, quite fit your collection but you like to uh, cherry pick you like to search through coin rolls to find these um, and then sometimes you know sending it out to a grader like PCGS or NGC doesn't make sense because of the value that that coin possesses why spend the 30 40 dollars to send a coin out to these grading companies when you're still gonna have a 20 30 dollar coin it just doesn't make sense oh and that's raw by the way all right um, so sometimes selling it on eBay, you know, throwing it on as a buy it now listing or five or seven day auction is probably a much better uh, choice. And, um, you know, it, depending on how many coins you find through the process of cherry picking a coin show or coin shop or going through coin rolls or just your piggy bank, you know, they all add up and you could take the few three, four five hundred dollars and do whatever you want. You know, uh, people are very successful in doing this. Um, and you play with house money. That's the beauty part of it. And it's fun. Um, so, like I said, all the coins are raw, ungraded. Uh, there might be an exception or two. Uh, but, you know, there are a few coins, believe it or not, are not graded that end up on this list that ends up selling for uh, quite the king's ransom. Uh, and we actually have a few of them in here to talk about. And I have a feeling that somehow, some way, they're going to end up in a PCGS or NGC holder sometime in the near future. So enough about that. Um, if you enjoyed today's content, again, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit that good old bell for instant notifications. And uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in. And these are all sales from the last 12 to 24 hours. It was quite the active Friday. But we have a 2001 Lincoln Memorial Cent. At first glance, it doesn't look like anything spectacular, uh, but we do have a nice broad struck coin. Uh, you can tell the coin is just slightly bigger. You can see it right here between the bust and rim. It's a, a lot more stretched out. Um, so these coins were struck without an actual collar uh, that's holding the coin together as it's being struck. So the metal flow has to go outwards like a pancake. Um, this one right here is a what I would consider to be a relatively common date for such an occurrence. Uh, but this one did sell for $16.50. The next one that we have here is a rather out-of-focus, off-center Lincoln Memorial scent. Uh, what I can tell you about this coin is that it is struck off-center by about 60 to 65%. Um, it does weigh 3.1 grams. And what does that tell us? Well, this is a copper bronze planchet. Um, so this is not a, uh, copper coated zinc. Uh, those, those coins, e even like this are not nearly as desired and they don't sell for quite as much. 
Um, what collectors of this particular error type like to see is actually a date, but we don't have one on this coin. So because of that, this one only brought thirteen dollars and ninety eight cents. Um, it does have it does have a few other issues. Like I don't know what this gunk stuff is here on the obverse of the coin. It could be corrosion, or it could be something superficial like grease and dirt. Uh, it's really hard to say, um, but you know that it is what it is. And um, again, only buy something like this if you just need a example. But if you're gonna buy these to collect them, usually you want to go for ones with an actual readable date. All right, so this one right here is a crazy, crazy world coin error, and I would say. If you're going to find any reason, any reason at all, to go through bulk foreign coins, this would be the reason. This is an Australian two-cent piece. Uh, I actually have quite a few of these um, in my quite stout collection of world coins. Uh, this one right here, obviously, you guys see it. This thing is double struck and is so beautiful. You can't see a date, but I would venture to guess you could, you could make out a zero. So it could be the year 2000, it could be a 1990, it's really hard to say, but this is this this thing gets a 10 out of 10 on the visual eye appeal department, it's not even funny. Um, Australians collect these coins, and just like Canadian coin collectors, they they love collecting their own errors, and they they find that these type of errors seldom come to the marketplace only because they're just so rare compared to the u.s variants of the same type so because of that this coin here and again i cannot believe this thing is not graded has sold for 941 dollars and 33 cents and that's u.s money by the way this coin was actually sold by an australian seller uh so well done this is a such a beautiful very stunning coin um, but this is just just a great reason to look through probably some of the more unwanted material that you could find out in the, in the show circuit today. And that's world coin bulk stuff because you never know where something like this or any other type of error will pop up. All right, so we have a uh, relatively newer Jefferson nickel. This is a 2020 P. This is a Philadelphia struck coin. And uh, the P mid mark obviously means that uh, there is always a chance you will come across something pretty neat. All right, the Philadelphia Mint facility is not particularly known for its uh, quality control. Uh, so uh, the dyes over time uh, will show its uh chinks in the armor i guess you know little cracks and all sorts of little chips and cuds and all that stuff um but on this particular coin i've talked about this one before it's got a really nice sized die chip on the left side of monticello or monticello or whatever you want to call this building um but over uh over the course of the like the last few years because i think these even even have shown up on older nickels uh, maybe in different placements uh, these are referred to as beehives, uh, beehive on the old Monticello building, <laughs> um, and they show up any anywhere. Uh, th this is one of the more common placements of the 2020 beehive die chip, and it's just a neat anomaly. Um, this one sold for $4.91. They're actually quite common um, to, to find, and uh, they come in all different progressions, different sizes. Uh, some of them I've seen a little bit bigger than this. All right, here's always a good one right here to look for. Now, the pictures are not fantastic. Uh, the coin was flooded in all sorts of lighting. But uh, if you are located in the southern U.S., primarily in the Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas region, okay, you have a real shot at finding these. Only because the U.S. Mint had dispersed and distributed the, um, the well-known high and low leaf Wisconsin quarters. And they only show up on the 2004 D the Denver minted examples. You will not find these on Philadelphia, but someone in Texas, the seller found a high leaf variety. And this is probably one of the best close-ups I have ever found of this, in spite of the fact that the actual blown up images of the obverse and the reverse that we just saw was basically garbage. 
but this is the image here that that means everything so you see this line right here this was either added in error or it was added intentionally to help either strengthen the design or whatever um, but this is what they call the high leaf variety and this one um, in spite of its condition which is just a well-worn example sold for $93 um, would you believe that but yeah if you guys are located in those areas these are out there and I'm, I'm finding sales on a weekly basis for raw examples in all condition states of this coin here's another quarter and uh, this time uh, we are gonna revisit what we call the earring uh, Lowell National Park quarter okay they only show up on the 2019 Philadelphia struck examples um, and it's a perfectly placed like perfectly round earring sized uh, die chip uh, that that's what a few of the professionals think it is uh, a die chip uh, but one of our esteemed colleagues on the live coin Q&A panel uh, has a different theory as to what that is and it, it all circulates back to the original I guess raw materials used to produce the working dies um the, the, those working dies were at one point just a slug or a cylindrical tube of uh of steel that has to get milled down and what you see here is the actual um area in which uh the uh, the, the points uh kind of connect up to the cylindrical rod in order for the milling process to work and the uh, I guess the mint employee just forgot to grind down that little nub or nipple or whatever you want to call it on the actual working die so uh, it's translated onto the coin as you see here um, but again uh, this has become kind of like a meme coin uh, since the, the beginning of the discovery phase of this particular anomaly and um, people do like them I, I remember these were selling for like 50 to $100 when they were first discovered they've since come down uh, you know since that discovery um, point uh, a, a lot of them do exist but if you do find them pull it out uh, if you want to resell it and you just don't find it uh, particularly neat or interesting uh, I'm happy to say that they are still worth some money this one sold for $29.99. Seems to be the market is kind of creeping back up on these. Uh, these have sold as low as $8 to $10 at one point. Uh, just because there's been so many of them discovered. Now this is a pretty nice looking 1954S Lincoln Wheat Scent. And uh, what we have here is going to be one of those, again, dates to look for. Uh, for the BIE die chip, all right, and uh, the reason why it's uh, termed the BIE is that that die chip in between the B and E, and it has to connect in some way, resembles the letter I. In this particular case, it does, but there are also BIE coins that has just a simple little die crack that goes from the bottom of the B into the bottom of the E, uh, which is kind of like an earlier progression or an early stage of a what is going to be a much larger die chip um, as the coins are being uh, struck and the, the dies are being worn down even more uh, but this one right here um, is another fantastic find uh, the more common dates to find this and we actually have one later on in the list are going to be like 1955s 1955d uh, i believe 57d is another common one 54s is on the semi-common stage um but if you find one in as nice a condition as this uh they are generally worth a little bit more than the other dates i just described this one sold for 15 dollars. well done so our feature coin of the week is going to be you guessed it a brand new 2021 philadelphia washington crossing the delaware this is kind of like the place marker coin that bridges the gap uh, between the recently outgoing America the Beautiful coinage series which was a 10-year series uh, before going into the prominent women uh, uh, I, I guess phase of the quarters uh, which will be releasing I believe next year but I think we found probably the most prominent coin error and it was expected 
I was expected to see one of these pop up eventually. We have a lot of stuff going on here. If you don't see it by now, how about a little bit of a close up? Now, this seems like it was a picture of a picture on computer screen or whatever. But what we have here is a tremendous amount of strike through. See all this stuff right here? This is like something that you would normally see on the uh, ATB back quarters, uh, the American Samoas. And you even have some feeder finger scrapes in there as well. You can see it all over the place. Um, but this is just a really crazy looking error. And I feel like that maybe there are some examples out there that are much more bigger and grandiose than the, what this one is. But I would say that, yeah, it's game on. Time to find more of these out there in varying stages because, uh, you know, as we all know, because of the pandemic um, and the lack of quality control, the lack of employees, because there are less people working at the mid facilities, is that there was going to be a lapse of some process of the mint, you know, going about its business. And the QC process, definitely one that took a huge hit here in the last 12 months. Um, so this one right here, much to my surprise, only sold for $14. But still, if you found one, it's like $10 a pop. All right. And usually if you're going through BU rolls and you find your first one, more than likely you're going to find a whole lot more because um, these coins, if you're finding BU rolls and you're getting them at the bank, um, they're all struck between maybe one or two unique sets of dies. Um, so if you find one, more likely you're going to find a whole bunch of them. But just think, 8 to $10 a pop. If you opened up a $1,000 face of quarters and you find maybe half the box with this on there, good job. That That is a heck of a profit on something like that. And it's been done before. Uh, I've actually seen a few people that have opened up boxes of quarters and come to find maybe 25% of them end up having things like this. Um, and then, you know, they just end up doing really well on the secondary market. So that yeah, one to keep an eye out for also look at various other different types of errors on this coin as well. There's bound to be more different variants of the strike throughs and other weirdness going on, but Hey, it's all good, uh, because we could all benefit. Okay, our first piece of currency, this time a 1974 $1 Federal Reserve note. So just looking at this right here, it looks like it's a, you know, cut off center or what have you. Uh, or maybe there's a little misalignment in the actual uh, print somewhere. Um, I would say that the first print is definitely misaligned and that's going to be this black main print right here. Um, the serial numbers and district seals and all that stuff that's what they refer to as the third print that's the final i guess overlay of of print that they put on there but um yeah pretty crazy just an incredible looking error that i mean the back of the note is is pretty well centered uh so there is definitely a um a shift uh in the sheet when the um the third print was was applied um, therefore giving it that kind of wild miscut look, um, but it's not miscut because the back is pretty well straight on there. Uh, this one, a best offer was accepted. Uh, the original asking price with shipping was $54. So it probably sold maybe between 30 and 40 bucks, which seems to be the going rate for a, uh, what they call a minor misalignment. All right, so uh, looking for some uh, earlier RPMs is a lot of fun. Now, if you're able to find them on much nicer looking condition coins like uh, these 1946S brilliant uncirculated uh, Lincoln Wheaties, uh, you, you can find something pretty nice. Uh, what we have here is an RPM. You can see the image there on the right with the arrow that's provided by the seller. Uh, this is RPM number 13. So your secondary S is punched west of the primary. You can see that extra curl of the S uh, poking through there on the left. And uh, this one example sold for $17.95. And you can guess it, there are three available for sale, one of which did sell. Here's our next piece of currency, this time a 1977A $1 Federal Reserve note. Now, as you can see, there's something going on with the inking on this one. 
And uh, sure enough, we have some insufficient inking on that uh, that black print right there. Um, that is uh, pretty noticeable, I, I would say. Um, so yeah, it's just the uh, the plates ran out of ink uh, during that process, and uh, this is what it will look uh, look like. And it could occur on the first, second, or third printings uh, of the note. Uh, this one right here through seven bids sold for seventy dollars and fifty cents. And these do show up in even some of the newer notes. So your 2013s, your 2017 series notes, um, you can find these on there. Uh, there's the back for you. Uh, nothing of note. Uh, get it? Note. All right, so here's a uh, relatively uncommon off-center struck Roosevelt dime. I would say this 1971 P. Rosie is off-center by about 10%-ish. Uh, I would even say maybe even 11%, <laughs> uh, depending on how you look at it. Uh, this one right here, a best offer was accepted uh, for 40 bucks. Uh, so it is a much tougher date. Uh, you usually don't see a lot of early 70s or late 60s rosies that are off center and uh again if i know an off center error collector they collect by a couple different types okay they want full dates because how are you going to do a date set if you don't have a full date on there and um i would say the next thing that uh that plays a huge role would just be the, the amount of spread um people want to collect uh, a lot of these coins by the same amount of off-center uh, spread, you know, 10, 15, 20% at the most. Um, and they keep it consistent all the way through their collection. And there are just some dates where many millions were min minted, but for these particular type of errors, they're considered key dates. You know, you just didn't see a lot of these type of errors. Uh, this is probably one of them right here. And the same goes for this one here, too. This is actually a 72D. So this is a Denver example. <coughs> the only difference is this one is off-center by a lot more. It's 55%. Uh, a best offer was accepted. The original asking price was $45 on this one. Again, I uh, for as long as I've done the PCMRs uh, on, on our channel here, um, this is probably... A date that I have never seen come up uh, in any of the YouTube uh, completed sales in the last year and a half of this uh, this video. So this is very interesting. This is a really tough coin. Tough date, that is. And uh, definitely do keep an eye out, again, for late 60s, early 70s off-center struck coins. If you are an avid uh, uh, coin show attendee, uh, this would be a great cherry pick, especially if those dealers don't know what they have and they think, oh yeah, it's just a modern dated Roosevelt dime, we'll sell for 10 bucks, um, and then you could really uh, cash in on opportunities like that. All right, so here's another common date, I would say. Uh, again, from our seller with the bad focused images, this is a 1998 Philadelphia Lincoln Memorial set. Off center by about 20% ish, somewhere around there. Uh, this one sold for $16.28. All right, so here's some more world coin shenanigans. We have a Canadian 1965 one cent piece here. Um, this one is cool. It's off center by just a smidge, probably 5% or so. And um, it, the overall eye appeal of the coin is just spectacular. I love full brown, kind of like that AU, low mint state grade type appearance to it. Um, it does have a little bit of mint red there in the leaves, you know, in the protected areas. Um, but this is cool. And um, talk to any error collector up in Canada. And um, yeah, the, the money that, that's being commanded for a lot of these error coins uh, north of the border it just cannot be compared anywhere else um only because you would think that the royal canadian mint doesn't screw up as much all right they're kind of like the denver of the north the denver mint of the north um uh, northern u.s or northern uh, north america i guess not northern u.s it doesn't make any sense but really cool error here and it sold for 36 dollars 42 u.s 
All right, so here's the other uh, BIE Lincoln scent. This is a 55D, um, uh, I mean, there you go, common date. Um, probably AU condition in nature. It does have some issues here on the reverse. Some sort of corrosion. Uh, but this is another progression of a BIE die chip that you can see here. A very common date, might I add. This one sold for $14.15. All right, not nearly as pretty as the previous off-center struck Canadian, although this one is off-center by about 10%. It's a little bit more uh, uh, offset in this particular error type. Uh, but I will tell you this, coin has been cleaned, and it's been cleaned bad. Uh, when you clean coins, it greatly diminishes the value, uh, sometimes as high as 50% or more. In this particular case, this was probably a, just a beautiful brown example of this coin um, that has all the potential uh, for collectability and the values could, could be to the moon if you wanted it to. Um, it could be a key date too. You know, I, I'm not, I'm not nearly in tune with the Canadian market as I used to be. So I don't know which particular dates are more of a key for the series for off center struck coins. Um, but through 19 bids, this one still sold for $25 and 45 cents. Which is surprising because a comparable um, U.S. Lincoln set of the same error and sh uh, offset and all that stuff would sell for a lot less money it, as a problem coin. All right, we do have a few of these lots on the list. This is the first one. We have a lot of 1972 Lincoln Memorial cents. Uh, this is a lot of three errors. It appears that they're all curved clipped. Uh, error coins. Uh, we have two. Well, actually, we have a 72P, 72D, and a 72S. So we have a, a full array of the branch mints um, uh, represented in this lot, which is pretty neat. Um, a couple of the coins leave a little bit left to be desired in the condition department. But if you're looking for just a, a date set uh, just to have, the, this, this would be a decent one. So we the 72P is a single, much larger clip. The 72D has a double clip, as you can see here. And then the 72S is a single as well. Probably the least spectacular looking example because of, of its condition. Altogether, uh, it sold for $11.68. All right, so this coin is not fantastic looking. Uh, but I, I've also kind of scaled back in talking about the, uh, the In God We Rust quote unquote quarters uh only because they're quite common and uh, again this is one of those meme coins like you know it, it's it doesn't matter what condition uh, these have a following all on its own and you know because of that they still command some decent money um this one has a little bit more going for it however uh, it's got multiple letters in the motto right here uh just completely gone all right and that's all a result of clogged dice all right so we have a few of these letters right here in this motto that were completely caked in grease, debris, metal shavings, you name it. And then after so many strikes, and keep in mind, with every strike, there was a tremendous amount of heat and friction going on. Um, the, this impaction of just all this crap in these letters uh, ends up getting really hard, all right, um, to the point where it fills it. And it won't translate into anything onto the struck coins. So we have a pretty weak I. The G in God is nearly gone and the T is gone. All right. But the namesake in God we rust has only affected the Kansas quarter, which is crazy. And the Philadelphia example that you won't see this on Denver's. Um, surprisingly, this coin sold for $23.94. Yeah, there is still a market for these, so uh, definitely keep an eye out for them. As you can tell, condition, I would say, doesn't matter. <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying that because condition usually always matters, um, especially for a common error like this. Uh, here's just a really pleasing example of a 1965 Washington quarter uh, with a single shallow clip uh, right here. And you can see some of that Blakesley effect going on opposite end. You can see weakness in the Y. Um, I would say it's a nice AU55 example. Uh, nothing really to scream about here. 
Uh, this one sold for eleven dollars and seventy four cents. And then we also have a, I would say, a much nicer looking coin. It's got mint luster. This one, however, is a 1966. And this one, by the same seller as well, also sold for $11.74. These two were both buy it now listings, and that's why it's the same price. All right, so this one's cool. And you're not going to believe how much this coin sold for, but it's a 2020p Lincoln Shield scent, and uh, it's got a partial tilted collar. It also looks like a broad strike, and it also looks like it's slightly off-center, um, which they all seem to fit kind of like that same profile for that type of error. But you could see the railroad um, uh, kind of like look of the edge right here, and that's why it's a partial tilted collar error, among all other things. Uh, through 13 bids, this one sold for $37.21. Look out for these. This coin appears to have circulated a little bit, so these are floating out there. For you folks east of the Mississippi that see just constant amounts of brand new coins, guess what? Even though they're new and you would think that the quality is a lot better these days, guess again, take a look at this coin and make that judgment call for yourself. Now, the stunner, visually, for the week has got to be this one, all right? So, this is kind of like a fragment, you know, ragged clip type of coin. Um, it, it looks like I'm staring at the moon, honestly. But it's a 1947S Lincoln Wheat scent. Uh, you can just see the ragged nature of this clip. So, it's like an end-of-strip type style coin at one point. Um, yeah, 22 bids. Accumulated $172 for this bad boy. I think we also saw a coin similar to this, I believe, last week. Uh, that didn't sell for quite nearly as much money. And I think it's it was a Philadelphia coin, but this one is a San Francisco. So uh, pretty crazy. Uh, good looking error. And uh, I'm kind of jealous. I, I mean, this would be a coin that, honestly, I would buy. Uh, just for straight up eye appeal and shock value alone. Uh, they both go hand in hand. I'm, I guarantee you. This might even end up in a graded slab one day. And I'm sure a coin like this, because it's so unique, will only go up in value over time. So this was a very smart purchase, even though the amount of money spent for it seems quite high. All right, I believe this is the last piece of currency, but you're going to look at probably one of the more unique errors that you will lay eyes on here in quite some time on currency, and this is a 1988A. So that, that series date um, is quite significant on its own. So you can see that there is some shift here in the third print. Uh, you see some overlapping in the serial number and into the first print design. Um, the district seals are way off kilter on this one. But you're never going to believe that this one is also a web note as well. You can see that the uh, the plate number is up here on the upper right-hand corner of the word one on the reverse. Um, and if you guys don't know what a web note is, the printing process of web notes were different. Okay, today um, these notes are produced on large sheets of paper. Okay, they call it 32-note subject sheets. They're just big enough to fit 32 total notes. Uh, web notes were actually produced on what I like to call a toilet paper roll. I mean, you guys know the Blue Ridge Silverhound logo by now. Um, it's one continuously fed roll of paper, all right? And all these notes are printed on there and then subsequently cut. Um, it's kind of crazy the way it works. Uh, it's like old school printing newspaper type of, you know, uh, processes. Uh, but they did this for a number of years and come to find out it wasn't nearly as efficient as they thought it would be. Um, but when you have a web note with kind of like that little misalignment error, uh, it, it's like the sun and moon and stars are all aligning in perfect, perfect harmony. And uh, because of that, it makes it quite a, a, an oddity, a very neat note and uh, error collectors of this sort of thing uh, usually goes pretty gaga for it. Now, here's a strange part. This note right here through 14 bids sold for $49, which I feel like is a little bit on the low side. I mean, this is a note that could have easily eclipsed $100. Um, maybe it's just a minor kind of like misalignment shift of that, that third print. Who knows? 
Uh, but this is a really, really neat error. And uh, being a web note all by itself without the error, it's like a $25, $30 note. So make sure you guys are still looking out for these. I know that, you know, 1985, 1988, and what's the other one? 19, 1991 series where you can find web notes. Uh, they're getting a little bit scarce um, because the older notes, of course, are all well worn to this point. And um, usually the banks will toss those out and send them back to the uh, Federal Reserve uh, when they get too well off, you know. All right, so uh, this one right here is a, uh, what is it, 2006 P, uh, Nebraska State Quarter. Now, the coin is not in great shape. However, this coin is um, quite uncommon because how often do you find state quarters with clips? You don't, right? I, I mean, you know, they, they come up very infrequently. Um, I would say in the year and a half that I've done the PCMR, I've probably talked about maybe two or three uh, rim-clipped state quarters. Here's another one here today, and the coin is not in great shape, obviously, but uh, pretty neat regardless. Through 10 bids, sold for $14.09. So that's a pretty good return off of a... A, a well-loved, well-circulated coin. All right, so we have our uh, our last and final lot of error coins. And it looks like we have 10 Jefferson Nichols, and they all have the same thing. They all all, all have the uh, kind of like the curved clip error on there. And, uh, yeah, 10 of them all together, varying dates. Uh, you know, this one's interesting because that's a newer um, newer design obverse coin um let's see well this one right here 17 bids accumulated 46 dollars and 50 cents i'm trying to see if there is some value proposition uh of buying this and then selling them individually you might be able to squeeze eight to ten dollars per coin if you sold them individually but the person the seller of this lot sells a bunch of error coins um, as well. I think it's Currency Treasures or one of the other, uh, you know, more prominent uh, or consistent sellers of error coins. Um, so if this person could have done that, they would have already, but found just to, you know, minimize the amount of work that's involved, you know, they just figure, yeah, we'll just go ahead and sell this as a lot. So I don't know. It's really up for a debate whether or not this is a wise lot to buy just to flip, you know, as a singular coin uh, type of listing. But there you go, $46.50. We have a couple more to go here, and that's going to do it for the day. How about this one? 1883, Liberty Head Nickel, uh, which has a, well, it was probably a clamshell lamination at one point, had detached from the coin, but it's still with the original coin so it's like it's a two-piecer um yeah, i don't know if the uh the owner of this coin had helped it along any to where it split completely uh because it's quite rare to have actually of a coin like this of this age to have both pieces still together as a set um it's visually entertaining to look at <laughs> if anything uh but yeah this is pretty Pretty cool looking coin right here. Um, it sold for $49.99. I feel like that's a little low for something like this compared to some other similar lamination, you know, type of two-piece coins on like Lincoln Cents, uh, where I've seen those sell for virtually double what this one went for. Um, but I looked at the reverse. I'm like, oh yeah, it's it's been cleaned and it's got corrosion. You can just see all these little hairline scratches going back and forth. Um, the coin obviously has issues. But if you could look past that, there is quite a bit of beauty in this particular error, especially on a coin that, wow, is nearly 140 years old. I mean, we're two, two years away from that. All right, and the final coin that is going to kind of raise your eyebrows is this 1958 D. Now, the coin is in decent shape. Some would even say... Fine, it's a great looking album filler type of coin. Um, but a well placed anomaly of sorts or something uh, will make a rather just okay, uninteresting coin 
all of a sudden be very interesting. And uh, this one has that die chip there on the top of the one that makes it look like an R. Now, believe it or not, I've actually seen this before. I probably even have one floating around somewhere here uh, on my inventory or whatever. Um, but yeah, the, this one is just, first of all, it's a really nice condition coin. That helps a lot, um, especially with photos. It, it just gives it a lot, much more dramatic look. But yeah, the, the, a well-placed die chip anywhere on the coin. You know, if it's in front of Lincoln's mouth, it looks like a cigarette. If it's on the top of a one, it looks like the letter R, a lowercase r. But um, yeah, this one was actually sold as being the R958 variety, which is just crazy, but brilliant marketing. Um, it's just a die chip. <laughs> you know, that's all it is. There is even a little bit of die chip here at the bottom of the one or the nine that kind of connects near the min mark. So, there you go. But you're never going to believe how much this puppy sold for. 38 unique bidders. Or 38 bidders. I'm not going to say they're unique. There's probably like multiples of that same bidder. 38 bids. $59.85. Um, yeah, it's like a play on the actual date here. $59.85. Like, who could have think that up? Um, yeah, it... The coins like this aren't supposed to sell for 60 bucks, But, uh, you know, again, the marketing, the pictures, these are all important things if you're going to be a successful eBayer of these type of coins. You know, you got to paint the story. You got to tell the picture. Or you got to, yeah, whatever. Yeah, you, you guys know what I mean. Uh, if you're able to do that, people can buy into it and then buy into these anomalies. Um, you know, I'll be honest. These don't come up that, that often. Uh, you know, I think I've come across maybe one or two of these through many hundreds of thousands of Lincoln Weed Scents that I've personally searched through. So, you know, there is that. It, it's It's got a cachet all of its own. But hopefully there is a lot, a lot of coins to kind of get your searching juices going for your Saturday. I want to thank you guys for joining. Happy Memorial Day, by the way. We are still going to do the Monday Market Report. On Memorial Day, um, I, I want to thank everyone for joining in, and um, best of luck in your hunt, as always. I'm your host, Sean, with Blue Ridge Silverhound. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit that bell for instant notifications if you're feeling generous. And uh, that's going to do a coin Alex. We are discovering together. Would love to hear your, uh, your success stories this week in your finds. You guys take care. Have a wonderful day and uh, enjoy your long weekend.